Are we here? Are we ready? We are. All right. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. I'm... Wait, we're not seeing all our Facebook fans. Well, hopefully they'll join us. They're coming along. I'm Misty Doan. I'm super excited to be here with you today. Um, hopefully you guys are getting ready for Thanksgiving if you're here with us in America. We've, we're celebrating Thanksgiving this week on Thursday. So lots of cooking and crafting happening at my house. Um, hopefully you guys are doing the same and we'll be enjoying some time with family. Uh, as far as who we've got watching, Jake, you have any call outs you want to make? We got a ton of call outs. We've got Minnesota, the Netherlands, Kobe. Netherlands. Vicky so is fun. here from snowy Michigan. We got, I, I saw earlier who was on up, up higher, higher, keep scrolling. <laughs> Everybody's here. Washington, Brazil. Wonderful. Copper's here. Dance for joy. Fabulous. Thank you guys so much for being here. We've got a really quick and easy project for you guys today. Um, one of uh, Jenny's most popular tutorials is the self-binding baby blanket. It looks just like this. Cute one right here where you have a solid on the inside and on the outside and it, it's self-bound. It's pretty snazzy and super, super easy. But we decided for this particular live that we would make a patchwork one like this. Isn't that so cute? This tutorial is literally one of the top rated, yeah, you it just is. said it's that. It is, it's one but of our most popular, yeah. Super easy so, gift so, to throw together. So, so, so easy and quick. And so if you have um, someone who's having a baby or if you're having a baby soon or grandbaby, this is so handy and um, really, really easy to make. So we are going to, to do that now. So to I, begin with. Misty, also I wanted to say, uh, we have a Hawaii on here, which is where we all uh, wish we were. Yes. Warmer, warmer weather. That would be nice. All right. And a salt lake. It's great. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the project. He's distracted by all your beautiful faces, I'm sure. So here we go. Okay, wait, wait. Let me ask. We have a, we're having a technical issue real quick. Oh, Mary, okay. Mary, do you want us to try to reset Facebook? Try to reset Facebook. All right. We're going to end the Facebook Live so our two followers stick with us. And we'll be right back, I guess. And then... Try to come back in, Facebook. go to video. Our YouTube fans, though, I know, you guys it's are always, sticking strong. We were having YouTube trouble, now we're having Facebook trouble. Man. It's always something. Give us just a second. Sorry I couldn't make it when I was so close, but I'll be there in spring. She, she didn't stop by. Copper she, didn't. She didn't. Darn it. Next time. Next time, Copper. We can't wait to meet you. Looks like final. Ooh, yeah, let's talk about the fabric a little bit. Okay, yeah, we can talk about that. So this is um, Pinned Pals by Robert Kaufman. And for today, I'm going to use the mint line, which is right here. It's so cute with these mints and whites and grays. But it actually comes in five different colorways. And so this, this one that I showed you earlier is some of those different colorways just all mixed together. And they're all so cute um, with the similar prints. And the fill, the hand on Oh, yes. Is... And it's flannel. So it's so, so soft. So I love this. Is it this. a flannel? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, awesome. it's flannel. They're super soft, um, super cuddly, great for babies, especially in the winter time. I love this gray, white, and black uh, colorway. It's super cute. And then also there is just a traditional blue, white, and gray. Really, really fun. And it's kind of like a, does it have a hint of like the blue? Which It's one? like a baby blue. Yeah, it's a baby blue. It's definitely great for a baby project. And like I mentioned, these are fat quarter bundles, um, which is a little different than what we usually and work with, but we wanted these soft flannels and they're so, so cute. So there's the blue. And, and then of course- And we will get close-ups on these once we get our our feet Technical rolling. Technical difficulties figured out. Yeah, then we've got this cute pink and then also a fun sunshiny yellow. They're really, really cute. All right, what are we using for backing the flannel? Guys, uh, it is, this is going to be the best tutorial. If you have not seen this, you've got to so stay tuned easy. in because it's amazing. So for the one I'm making, I'm using this right, really cute go. mint giraffe. We're good? Yep. All right. So in case... 
Facebook, welcome back. Thank you for being patient with us. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Misty Doan, this is Missouri Star Live, and we're going to be making a self-binding baby blanket. So today's project, I'm using this Pinned Pals uh, fabric bundle, fat quarter bundle from Robert Kaufman. It's flannel, they're super soft, super cute. I'm using the mint colorway. It actually comes in four additional colorways. Uh, but to get started, all that I did was I went ahead and cut up my bundle into five inch squares. I wanted to make sure that this uh, was usable for you, whether you had some pre-cut charm squares or were working with a fat quarter bundle. So I thought just a simple patchwork would be a good way to start. So these are just five inch squares that I've sewn six across and six down. Well, and even a cool idea, you know, piece together something out of cotton fabric and then like a minky back. Absolutely. Backing. I was going to say yeah, that. I did want to give this away. Julie's trying to figure out what the backing is. It is flannel. It is flannel. So you'll you, find out. This, this project is um, made completely out of flannel. It's really great in cuddle or minky. And like Jake said, you can even kind of uh, mix your regular quilting, quilting cotton with the cuddle on the back or a flannel on the back. But I would just make sure that you um, maybe pre-wash so you don't have shrinkage with the different fabric types that you're dealing with. So either way, um, for my project, like I said, I've got uh, six five inch squares across by six down, just put together with a quarter inch seam. Really simple uh, patchwork here. And so then what we're gonna do, um, the traditional pattern that Jenny taught, her inside square, which is what this is, measured 30 inches. But I'm gonna go ahead and measure this and see where it ended up. It looks like it's about 27 and a half, just shy of 28 with those seams that you take. So now what you want to do is for your backing piece, you're going to want to make it 10 inches larger in both directions. So widthwise and lengthwise. So this one, we're going to go with 28. And so then this one needs to be 38. So you can see I've pre-cut this with my 10 extra inches length and yeah. width. So to clarify, any size, like the mi yeah. the middle square can be any size as long as you can get a square that size. For right. The so as long as you can get the backing fabric that can be ten inches larger, you can make your inside square whatever size you want. Um, so if you you know want to use that wide hundred and eight backing, you can yeah. make a big throw, and that would be really great and snugly. So for this. Um, the next important step is you want to mark your centers and it's super easy on this patchwork because like I said, I've got six across and six down. So I have seam lines that are my center points. So I'm not going to pin this one just yet, but then on your background um, or your backing fabric, you need to make sure you do the same thing. So actually what I'm going to do, because I find it to be the easiest is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to press my center marks and then I'll pin. Oh, actually, looks like it wants to be marked this way. So we'll do this. Need me to move this stuff out of the way so you can see better? Perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure I've got this lined up right in half. And I'm gonna take a hot iron and just hold it on there to mark the middle point of my backing. I'm gonna do it on that side. And then also, this one looks like it's done pretty well, but I'm just going to do it again. We also had a question, is if these, if this is sold in pre-cuts, this flannel, do you know? Um, do you know if it's sold in pre-cuts, Mary? We have the fat quarter bundle and yardage. We have, uh, in this particular line, we have the fat quarter bundles and yardage. So no pre-cuts for this one, but it's very, very cute in all those different bundles. All right, so now we've marked our centers and as you can see here by pressing it it's very very obvious and so to get started you're going to lay out open this up make sure it's nice and square and you want to make sure it, you've trimmed it exactly so that both your top square and your bottom square line up nicely and so to begin with we're going to take this and sit it here we've got our center that you can see and we're going to mark it or match it to the center of this piece. We're putting them right sides together. And we're just, I'm gonna go ahead. Also, yeah, if you guys have any questions, make yeah, sure you ask Yeah, ask questions them. as that, we're going. That is my job. <laughs> and he takes it very feel, seriously. Yeah, yeah. All right, so see, I've lined that up. I've lined my center seam line here up with that uh, press, press line that we made on our backing. And you're probably thinking, what is going on? This does not fit. 
that's totally fine. So we're gonna pin that one. Then I'm gonna scoot it up. So we had a question of like, can we make these bigger for bigger people? And I think as big as you can make the square. Yeah, it's really all about. Which is five inches. It's all about making sides. sure that you can get that extra 10 inches length and width on your background piece. As long as you can do that, it will. It should work. And well, say you, if you don't mind a seam, in the right, you can make it double you the could, size. Exactly. But you're gonna so have you, a seam in the middle. You could make it much larger, and so it's really just just up to you. But I think it is um, important that it stays square for these mitered corners that we're going to do in just a little bit to work. So it does need to be the same length and width instead of a rectangle. So then we're going to. I've slid this up. We're down at the bottom piece. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did there. I'm going to line up my seam with that press line. I'm just going to pin here. And this is one of those projects where pinning really is like the <laughs> most important part. You, you really want to take the time to do this and pin and line it up. So we're going to do it on the sides now. Just going to make sure I'm <coughs> on that mark that I pressed in. Uh, that was Michael. So we're pinning that. <laughs> That's all right. He choked on a jelly bean. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> jelly beans. Where did those come Has from? Has anyone else seen Three Ninjas? Anyone? <laughs> My kids love that movie. Okay. So then this is our last side. Same thing. We're just going to pin our centers together. And I know this kind of looks like a bunchy mess, but I promise it is going to come together so easy. So now that we've done that, what you're going to do is you're going to pick a side and you're going to start from that pin that you've put in and you're going to move to the edge. Let me make sure you can see this in the top cam. So you're going to sew a quarter inch seam from the center and go ahead and back stitch a little bit to make sure since you are kind of starting and stopping a lot on this project. Um, so you're going to back stitch, go a quarter inch all the way down and you're going to stop a quarter inch from the edge here. That's really, really important. So make sure you don't sew all the way off this, this square. You want to stop a quarter inch out. So if it would be easier for you to put a pin in to remember to stop, you can totally do that. Do you have a question? So we also had, yeah, we had a great question. Sure. They were talking about, um, is it just quilt and backing? So and since yes, all this is is a flannel piece top and flannel backing, no batting, no nothing else in between. So yeah. it's, it's like a cozy little little throw it's much lighter weight than like a traditional quilt but it's still snuggly and warm well and that's kind of the magic of it it makes it really simple but if you had if you added a minky or something right then it would be yeah, even warmer the, the cuddle. cuddle would be even warmer absolutely so now all we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew from that center down to a quarter inch away from the end and we're going to repeat that on three of the sides, and then on the final side, we're gonna leave an, a little opening that I'll talk you through when we get there. So let's get started here. Make sure I am good to go. So on this first one, I always just put my, um, my pin just right behind the presser foot so it's out of my way, and then I'll come back and take that out, and, and we'll sew the other direction once we get there. So let's just make sure we're all lined up Misty, our Indiana fans are here. Hello, Indiana. Charlene. She says she's loving the project already. Yay, thank you. So I've taken a few stitches. I'm going to back stitch now. And then we're just going to continue on down. Just taking time to make sure that it's lined up. You really want to take your time since this is a little bit more bunchy. Um, take your time to make sure they stay where you want them to go. Like this one's shifting a little bit, so we're just gonna fix that. Slide it back, there we go. Now I'm watching that pin. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of there, but it's a great reminder that I'm gonna stop a quarter inch away from the edge. And then I'm gonna back stitch and pull this out. All right, and then we're gonna take this pin out we're going to do the exact same thing going the other way. So again, just line it up and kind of
kind of just go right over those stitches that you started in the middle before. So you had Sandra said she side. tried it with Minky, and she said it slips a lot, so just make sure you pin yes. quite a bit. Yep, you just want to pin and take your time. There's no need to rush. We're just going to keep... Or even, what are those clips? Wonder clips. Wonder clips, Wonder yeah, clips would work great. great. So we're just watching to make sure we stay a quarter inch away. A couple more stitches in the back stitch. We're good there. So we have that first side done. And then I like to go ahead and go to the opposite side. I don't know if that's the... Man down. Man down. Can you hear me? Nope. <laughs> are, you put, are you turned on? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, we're sorry. Back. I don't know what happened there. All right, hopefully... The whole you... chat, everybody's like, no. <laughs> Can you hear me? You might fix your... Oh, voice, yeah, uh, it pulled a little bit. Video. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to put it in my pocket, so hopefully that doesn't Rachel happen again. Rachel from the UK wants, to know, wants you to know that you're doing awesome. Thank you, Rachel. That is so sweet of you. And a happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to do that exact same thing on the opposite side here. Just going to get this all lined up. Quarter inch seam. Get my threads out of my way. There we go. Oop, make sure you're lined up. I don't know what it is about flannel, but it does like to shift a little bit. So you really want to be aware. And um, So Mary had a question of why we're sewing in both directions instead of just starting on one side and going straight through. So we're sewing from the middle out. That's a great question. We're sewing from the middle out because we're going to do a mitered corner on the outside and we want to make sure that we keep our centers exactly lined up and the easiest way to do that is to go from the center out and if you watch Jenny's tutorial she does it the exact same way and so it, it helps us guarantee that the fabric we have left on both sides is just perfect and so that's why we're doing that that's a great question all right so we're gonna zip down here there we go Lisa said, you can help me fix my corners. And yes. Yes. We are we going to walk through the corners. You Keep will have watching. no trouble with the corners when we are done. All right. So then again, the other way. Take that pin out. Whoops. Fell down. Uh, Charlene asked if a walking foot would work well for this. Um, It probably would. I am. I'm going to be honest. I am a make-do kind of person, and I, <laughs> I just always use a regular foot. But if you want to try it, I'm sure it would work great. When I think if you had more layers, it would really, that's when a walking foot would come in. Right. But with the flannel, the flannel really sews really nice. Yeah, it does. I mean, really, the only tricky part is just making sure that it stays lined up because it does kind of want to shift a little bit. But I don't have any problem getting it to go, you know, through the presser foot or anything like that. All right, so then remember, okay. your, remember your quarter inch away from the end there. You always want to watch for that. It's a little bit trickier when you're sewing this direction because your backing fabric is on top. So you really have to watch for when you're coming to that point. So I can see it just peeking out. I've got it just barely peeking out past my backing fabric so that I can see it. Then we back stitch. All right, so I've got the top and bottom sewn together, and we're going to go to the first side. And then you can see here, when I go to line this up now to take this first seam, I'm going to get this like little dog ear on the corner. Oops, my mic being grumpy. Sorry, guys. Are we okay? Yeah, got it now? Good. Okay, so you can see when you have this lined up, because you're just going to fold it straight. So that your seams line up you're going to have this little bunch and this is what we're going to use to make those mitered corners that i was talking about so same thing start in the center i feel like your hair is trying to attack it probably the is microphone. do i need a ponytail sorry guys i'm causing <laughs> all sorts of problems today i'll keep it over here on the other side all right Oops, see, I got too confident and my fabric started to shift on me. 
I think we're still good. So this is the same thing when you're going this direction. You want to watch and do that same quarter inch away from the edge. And the reason that you do that is if you sew too far, your corners will not lay nicely. They'll get all bunched up and kind of weird. So I'm going to go nice and slow into that corner and back stitch. There we go. Just how I wanted it. And then we'll take that pin out go the other way. Oh, you can see I got a little close on my seam here when it shifted on me, but it's still holding, so we're just going to continue on. I'm coming to fix this mic. It's driving you crazy? It's in your armpit or something. Oh, sorry. Okay. We're wearing black because we're in mourning. <laughs> From our Chiefs losing. Our Chiefs losing yesterday. <laughs> uh, you know, that's all right. Big football fans at our house. Okay, there we go. So we backstitched again. Still holding those starts and stops. Going to really line this up to the end. Now again, I'm watching for that fabric that's on the back side to make sure I don't go too far and I can feel where that seam is. So I'm just watching for it. All right. Okay, so we have three sides done. You can see these little dog ears and we're going to go to the last side. Now on this side, it's basically the same thing but you're going to want to leave an opening. So I'm going to lay this out a little bit flatter and I'm going to put a few more pins in here so I remember to leave an opening. So we're just going to go ahead and do one pin here. But Marjorie was mentioning that yeah if you had that thicker layer of cuddle mm -hmm. that's when a walking foot, a yeah, walking foot really would be would. very helpful then that's absolutely true. Okay. I mean I'm all about the normal foot just forcing it through. But. <laughs> Sometimes it's harder than it needs to be though. All right, so this is our last side. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this, this center section open, so these two blocks here. And so I'm just gonna go from this outside pin to the edge and this outside pin to the edge, and we do that so that we can turn this right side out. So that is what we're going to do. Just leave it big enough that you can flip it, and then we will finish that off later. And don't worry, this one is actually very easy to finish that edge, so you don't have to fret about hand stitching it closed or anything like that. All right, sorry, my thread is not cooperating. There we go. All right, now again, I'm just double checking since we have all this fabric kind of bunched up that they're where I want them to be. And back stitch. We have a question about how much the flannel shrinks. I think it's a good one. Oh. Is, is this stuff pre-washed? That's a good question. Um, I didn't notice that it shrunk very much at all. But, um, I mean, you I can pre-wash pre if you... Can you look it up on product? Yeah, that's it a good It might question. say on the actual product page. Let me... All right. So remember we're leaving that opening. So I'm looking for this outside pin this time around. Oops. All right. So you probably all could hear Mary there. Uh, no, the newer <laughs> flannels, that's what we just got. The newer flannels don't shrink enough to worry. Yeah, especially, yeah, they don't shrink enough to worry and especially when you're using them together, they're gonna shrink the same amount. Rachel once orders sent outside the U.S. Don't we send? Yeah, we, we order stuff. We order, you can ship 
sorry. Let me try that again. We ship internationally. So if you yeah, are outside of saying. the U.S., you can order from us. Sorry, sorry for cutting you off. But yeah, she was saying that uh, the import taxes are pretty rough. Yeah. <coughs> I believe that. That's probably true. All right. Maybe we could just like meet at the border and not throw them up. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think you can. We have, don't have no. a wall between us and UK, do we? <laughs> Mary, All right. Anything? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Now you can, I'm going to take these pins out. And you see I've left this little opening so we can go back and turn it later. And you can see I've got these little dog ears on all four corners. And so now the next step is we're going to actually go ahead and sew those corners shut. So the way that you're going to want to do that, we're going to do all of this before we even turn it. You're going to take your piece just like this on the corner and you're going to fold it so it lays nice and straight. Just like that. Line up your seams so that we've got it just right. And then now what you're going to need is you can either use a square ruler or a ruler with a 45 line. And you just want to lay that 45 line right on your um, seam line, just like so. So make sure we go nice and slow for this so we can see. Okay, maybe, well yeah, and I'm gonna, I'll do it four times. So we'll make sure that everybody can see. Can you see this okay, Isaac? Okay, yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, right. so we're right on this stitch line. I'm gonna make sure I've got both the top and the bottom lined up. There we go. We put Roxanne this. said, is somebody pregnant? Uh, Absolutely not. No, we are not having I'm not horses. pregnant. Sorry, just a, just a flowy shirt. Okay. No, anyway. no, I don't think she was mentioning. I don't think she was saying you. Uh, who saying. else would she be talking to, Jacob? <laughs> We're not having any kids. All right, we love our kids. We have don't three get me wonderful wrong. children, but, but that's we, it. Okay. We have a handful. So here we are, and so you're gonna want to look right where your stitch is stopped because remember that's your quarter inch away from the edge, and that is the key to all of this magic. So you're gonna put your ruler right up there where your seams ended and we're going to mark right along this line and that where we marked we're going to sew right on that line that's our stitch line oh jody from morocco is on awesome all right so we're going to take this straight over to the sewing machine keep it as flat as you can and we're just going to line that up um right on that line also, yeah, they're they're saying you need a shorter chair. We have it set up for mom. Yeah, and she likes to like. But she's a midget. She's just a tiny little thing. <laughs> she likes to perch. I do need a shorter chair, but that's okay. Someday, Misty, you're gonna have your own chair. Uh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> all right, so we've just sewn right on that line, and if you are nervous about it or unsure, you can totally test it out. So I'll show you how you do that. Before you trim it, this is the best time because once you trim it, if it's not right, you're in trouble because you've already trimmed it off. So we're just going to turn this and you can see that is going to lay so nice. See how that works? So now I can flip that right back out. Easy peasy. <clears throat> and we're going to trim that off. So you just Take your ruler and trim off so you've got a quarter inch seam. Copper says you just have a happy glow. Thank you. I do have a happy glow, I hope. <laughs> I will take a happy glow. All right, so we've done that first corner. So now it's a little less crazy looking. We're gonna do the same thing to the other four. So remember your patchwork, you're gonna kind of fold in on itself or your smaller piece if you're working with a solid. And I always bring that down towards me, just like so. Line that up. And then again, you're gonna take your 45 line on your ruler. You're gonna put it right on that stitch line. Oops. And then you're gonna use this straight edge of your ruler to mark. So just like so. And we'll sew that. 
got to give a shout out to Jana from Waco. Hello, Jana from Waco. We had a fabulous time in your city. Virginia on the road. And now I am back stitching here just to make sure, since we have so many starts and stops in this project, we want to make sure we hold all those stitches in. All right. Oops, there we go. All right, so same thing. We're just going to trim that off and keep working our way around. So if anybody's has any had any issues with the corners, make sure that we're answering all yes, your questions. Yes, because I know this is the part that like intimidates people. So let's make sure we've, we've got all your questions worked out as we're going along. And I will just keep making my way around this quilt here. Or blanket, I guess. I mean, it's still a quilt. We piece the top. Right? Absolutely. Okay, so just take your time, make sure you have it all smoothed out. If you're just joining us, we're working on a self-binding baby blanket. Really fun and easy project. We're lining can you see, Can you see the angle? So yeah, it's just the 45 yeah, can you lines make, up with the seam line. Yeah, so here's the ends of my stitches and here's, here's where that 45 line ends. So I'm putting that right on there, making sure it's right on the seam line. I'm gonna take my. Sorry to see. Let's go audible. Taking my. Bring us in. Bring us in. Uh, yeah, come in here close, Isaac, so we can. This is gonna get a little, little bit shaky. intense, guys. <laughs> oh, he's. You're. I think you have to bring the tripod because you're taped. Let's in. do this one, and we'll get it for the next. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. finish this corner, and finish we'll do. Finish this one, and then he'll be ready. Okay. And so then we're just gonna draw. We're gonna use the straight edge of our ruler. Make sure we're lined up, so we're gonna intersect the end of those stitches with this new stitch line. All right, and then we just take that nice and flat over to the machine and we sew right on that line that we marked. There we go. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention that this is, this is a tutorial. So like we just pulled an audible, we, we changed the size a little bit. We're just, we just wanna let you guys know that we could do any sizes, pieces, and but there is a full length tutorial on yeah. YouTube. There's a full length tutorial. We've linked to that in the, de the description or the post um, if you're on Facebook. And um, there's a pattern for it as well if you're interested in a pattern. So we are trimming that one. That leaves right, we're coming in close. One more. One. All right. We'll come in close. Just a second. Whoops. All right. So we take and we fold our top and bottom. You wanna make sure that's really lined up. Your seam lines are Oh, we had someone matched. interested in the cutting mat. This cutting, cutting mat, mat yeah, go ahead. is uh, the Christopher Thompson for Riley Blake cutting mat. It's fabulous. All right, so we're just gonna straighten that up, make sure it's laying nice and flat. Take your time. Then again, we've got our 45 line on the ruler. We're gonna put that right yeah, so on the it's stitch that line. That seam line is what we're chasing. So yep. Can you see? It? Right on the stitch line here. You see that? So we're just lining that then up. The, then the 45 on that. And then we're coming right to the end, so that when I draw my line, that new stitch line will come right to where our last stitch is stopped. So we draw that straight line and see how they're all gonna intersect right there at that point. That'll make sure we don't have any holes in the corners and you don't wanna cross over those stitches because if you come too far over, you're gonna get like bunches and gapping and in you the have, corner. You're coming, the stitches are on the bottom side right there too, right? Yes, so I've, I'm, I've lined them up together. That's a good point. So you so kind of sandwich it to make sure that they're lined up in both directions. So I've got both seams coming together that's what creates this corner here and they're stacked perfectly and then i mark right on that line right that, into that corner right into that corner together. of where those two come together exactly all right throw that out in the scrap bin and we'll take this last corner all right we are so close Ooh. 
Oh yeah, if you guys, if I didn't get to one of your questions, ask it again, because some of the questions, sometimes they start flowing pretty quickly, and uh, I miss them. Yep. All right. What kind of pen are you using? Oh, this is just a regular marking pen. Washable marking Washable pen. Washable marking pen. I'm not too worried about it, because this is essentially your seam line, so no one's ever going to see it. <laughs> You could re use a regular pen or a pencil, it would be fine. All right, so again, we're gonna trim this off to a quarter inch. Woo, that went wonky on the end there. Let me fix that. There we go, that's better. All right, and now we get to turn it right side out and see the magic. So we'll start with this first corner. And I always go. All right, we need the sure. ironing mat. I, we asked three times. What what is the ironing mat? I thought I said Christopher Thompson. No, 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 no. Ironing, ironing. Oh, ironing mat. ironing mat. Oh, this is a wool pressing mat, um, and we have those available on our website. And, and thank you for asking. Thanks. Sorry, it had yes. to be three times. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so then I'm just gonna take the end of my uh, sharp cutter here and press out the corners so that they are nice and sharp. If you have a so, chopstick or something, that would work so great. So somebody asked about washing. So I wanted to just say, if you have the opportunity to wash it, it's fine. The newer flannels don't shrink as much. They shrink very little. So it's always a good, si good thing to like err on the side of safety and wash it. But if you don't, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, I don't think you need to personally. I've never had it, had an issue with it shrinking and being wonky, um, and, and in with with any of these higher quality flannels. I mean, if you're use, using a, a lower quality product, then definitely pre-wash it. But uh, these work great. Well, and so pre-cuts never wash pre-cuts. Never wash pre-cuts. That's true. Don't wash your pre-cut squares. All right. So as you can see here, this came out perfect. Look at our little mitered corners. They look amazing, and it was so, so easy. Nothing to fear, Cute. nothing to worry. So now we're going to go ahead and press this flat. You move. Okay, somebody asked, where you left the opening? So this is the opening right here, and I will show you what we're gonna do with that. First, we're just gonna press it, because all we're gonna do to close this off, you don't have Can to hand it? stitch it. Can you see this, Isaac, right here? All you have to do to, to close this off is once we press this all flat and have it exactly how we want, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do a zigzag or a decorative stitch all the way around and that's gonna seal off our opening that we use to turn it. So really, really easy and I will show you how we do that as soon as we press this. Well, and somebody wanted a kit. If you buy a fat quarter bundle and what is it, a yard of fabric? Uh, and a yard of fabric, you got a kit, boom. Well, so uh, it's a little more than a yard. Thir what did we end up at? Because your inches? backing needs to be... 28 inches. N no, your backing needs to be 38 inches. So it's a little more than a yard. A right. yard and a quarter. So a little more than a yard. But if you had a fat quarter bundle, you might as well buy more backing that, than that because the bundle's going to make more than one of these, which is why it's a great gift option. So see, I went ahead and just made sure that my, my opening here, that I had the seam turned under, so that'll lay really nice when I get to it to top stitch. We're just gonna keep making our way around. Oh, this turned out so cute. Okay, somebody asked about a rectangle quilt and I feel like the process would be the same. This pattern calls for a square by a square. Yeah, it should be the same as long as your Overlap is the same. I would think that your miters so you would still work five out. five inches. I haven't tested it, so as on I, both sides. I haven't tested it on a rectangle, but I would think that it should still work out because you're still a square corner. What? Yeah, tell us how it goes. Mary says, try it out. I'm sure it will work. All right, so we're almost all pressed here. Just make sure you don't have any. Wait, wait, wait. Big rumples. I think I missed the question. I'm looking. When do you sew 
The miters? The miters are already done. We just did that. Yeah. What? Yeah, so the miters was that when we were talking about the corners, when we lay that ruler down on the 45 and cut it. That's what gives you the mitered corners. And then you, after you cut it, you sew a quarter inch inside on that. So yeah. you have that extra quarter inch. You just See sew how nice these turn out? This is when we had it inside out and we laid them all together and lined them up and drew the line. This is what you get when you turn it right sides out. And pretty much it's magic. It is. It's pretty magical. So now all I'm going to do to finish this off, now that I have it pressed flat and neat, I'm just going to take where I have this opening here and I'm going to start there so I can make sure I get it really good. And I'm just going to use a zigzag just because it is quick and easy. So I'm going to switch to a zigzag stitch here and we're going to come just a little bit before that opening. And all oh, you want to do that made a rectangle and said it turned out great. Perfect. So see a rectangle does work. That's awesome. All righty. So, so then, so you don't, they, they asked how far you stop from the corner, a quarter inch or so whatever the width of your seam is. I think what they're talking about is from the outside. It's that five inches is what you're stopping. Um, you well, start from the middle and sew until a quarter inch where the fabric where is. Where the fabric is. Yeah, but that's why it's so important that you line up your centers on both pieces and sew from the middle out. Because if you do it that way, it will work every time. If you try and, and sew straight across, even with pinning, it's going to shift a little bit and it could get a little wonky. All right, so now we're just going to zigzag. Yes, this is a baby blanket. That is the answer. Can you see this? And, and, and that's some of this stuff so it shut. Oh yeah. What? We get tied up in the details. It really is super simple. So simple. You sew to both sides. It's magical. You unfold it. You have these perfectly miter corners. It's really, it's a really cool project. Yeah, you have to take your time with the decorative decorative stitch. So we won't do all of it on camera today. But can you? I want to make sure you guys can see how this turns out. Because this right here, you can see I'm sewing our opening. And I started right on the other side of our opening and you cannot even tell that looks so great uh, once you put that decorative stitch over it. So it just closes it all up and I will just continue this all the way around the project. I'm going to go ahead and take a few more just to close this opening. Oops. Copper acid, there is going to be a tutorial this Friday. What? And of course, we don't miss. I can't hear you while I'm yeah. sewing. Yeah, we're, we're uh, Copper was asking if there's going to be a Friday tutorial with Mom. And we got you covered. There we go. All right, so you can see that turned out so great. Um, we did a couple different decorative stitches on these ones here. So again, here's another one. We just stitched all the way around with that cute decorative stitch. And here's one that I did with just a zigzag. And they look so great and they're so soft and so cuddly. So hold up the, fl the plain one. This one here? Yeah, so that's just no This is no just patchwork. no patchwork, just solid pieces. So this is a 30 inch square on the inside, 40 inch square on the outside. And then those. And then this is a, a patchwork, just like the one we made today. And those are five inch squares. Five inch squares. And so then we measured it and added 10 inches uh, to the width and the length for our backing piece. And it came together so cute. I love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this self-binding baby blanket project. I hope you make a whole bunch of them and give them to all the, the little cute babies in your life. And so they have something cuddly and warm for this winter season. And if you guys have any more questions, be sure and let us know. And we will see you next time. I think okay, that's wait. it. Unless we have questions. There's a, there are a ton of questions coming in okay. right now. Okay. All right. I'll take some. <laughs> okay. So he's saying, so let me read this one. My question is, when you sew the triangle miters, when you get to the bottom of the triangle, do you sew right off the edge or do you stop at the seam line? Um, I sew past it, but, but I make sure, that's a good question, I make sure that I am on, I'm on the opposite side. So I'm not sewing over those seams, if that makes sense. You want to make sure that you're like right in line with where the seam ends, but you don't want to sew over that seam because otherwise you're going to get bunching in your corners. 
Hopefully that makes yeah, sense. I think that was a great explanation. Okay. Also, yeah, there, there's a ton, but uh, a bunch of happy Thanksgivings. Happy Thanksgiving. Quarter inch yes. seams, yeah. Yeah, so, it's, so for this one I use quarter inch seam. If I was using Minky or Cuddle, I would use probably a half inch seam just because it shifts a little bit more. So, so you would adjust your corners and you would stop a half inch away to make sure to accommodate for that. That's all based on your, your seam allowance. So yeah, I think that's it. This is a really easy project. And, Give it a try. Okay, there's one more. And after this, hey, we're not taking any more questions after <laughs> okay, this. Okay, all right, one but more. But somebody was saying, if I made it with cotton on the front and uh -huh. Minky on the back, do I need a pre-wash? And the answer is, most of these fabrics are pre-washed. Most of this stuff do doesn't shrink, especially if you get, you know, this the higher quality right. cottons, where, which is what we sell. That's what we sell. That's what we carry. So if you bought it from our website, you should not need to pre-wash it. It should be and great. it should be beautiful. Yeah. And the iron and the is an Aliso, even though I said and we weren't taking any more questions. And this is the Missouri Star quilt pattern behind me. So if we have but, any of those questions, but that But seriously, you guys have been awesome. Sorry that you've been had to ask so much. We've had a ton of questions. Yeah. Great engagement. We loved it. Yeah, we really Sorry appreciate we you time. guys. Thank you so much for being here. Have a fabulous week and a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. you so much for supporting us and hanging out with us every week. And, um, yes. And doing what you do and making amazing quilts and making the world awesome. a little better. You guys are awesome and we really appreciate you. Happy Thanksgiving. See we'll see ya. you next week.